Be afraid of everything. Everything's bad. It's coming for I, you. I am scared. I'm I'm scared before we even have started to talk about anything. So this is good. This is good for me. Well, I've I done my one, job. Uh, you've done your job. Well, I was the one that said that I saw on TikTok because today is October seventh, and he said on a, he said Alexa, tell me about the earthquake in LA on October eighth. And Alexa was like, October eighth, there's a seven point earthquake going through Malibu. So and so we are now doing prophecies on last podcast. I hour. believe Alexa. I stand with Alexa. <sighs> And I think that that is the problem with, you know, religious prophecies. We're, we should be doing more with tech companies. They're the ones who are doing the right prophecies. Alexa, you said you were going to support women's wrongs, and Alexa does wrong often. Yeah, and I support her okay, in, well in then. all of it. Great. Um, yeah. Great. Do you think that that TikTok was, like, him pre-recording the... I am now on schizophrenic TikTok because I mistakenly liked a tweet from a man said that said, no, you can't, I can't go work at that Goodwill because it's right by the park where they think I stretch out all the girls because I'm well endowed. And I thought he was a comedian, but he's not. He's just a man that his mother keeps in the basement. And I was like, what a funny guy. Like and subscribe. But it's just so weird Oh, no. (laughs) I like that you thought that was legit. I thought it was legit. But you guys would be very proud of me because the other day I saw a news article on TikTok and I said, wait a minute, I'm going to double check that. And it was wrong. <laughs> Look at that. And it was I'm wrong. proud of, I am genuinely proud of you. I appreciate that you thought about that. Thank you. I'm um, nervous. I, <laughs> um, you came with sources, I'm right? nervous to be here. There y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> now, can I make sure I'm using the correct pronunciation just because I have multiple friends who are named Ariel and Ariel and Ariel, like, you know, different mm-hmm. accented parts of it? They're wrong. My name's Ariel. Ariel. Yep. Yep. Okay. I just want to make sure I say it correctly because sometimes you don't say like I'll pr- mispronounce one of my friends' names as the other Ariel, and then the, they secretly harbor you know a bunch Resentment. of contempt for me. And, wow. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, well, thank you for joining us on the show. You are a co-host on the show Fraudsters, which That's is coming right. up soon. That's me, Fraudsters. We're talking about the war on drugs. Woohoo! Yeah. So wow. fun. So festive. That you love, you, that you guys think the war on drugs was great, right? No. Oh. It's bad. Oh. What are some of the drugs we're talking about? We're talking about weed? We're talking about weed. We're talking about, uh, it's kind of like everything that has to do with the war on drugs. So like how people get mass incarcerated, um, how there was a, a time where they were, well, they still are, um, in Pennsylvania, they were arresting children. Um, at school for just like being a little bit mischievous or having a little bit of weed and it was just a epidemic of proportions that we have not seen since. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, it's and it obviously still a huge problem. Uh, you guys probably know um, LPN works with Last Prisoner Project a lot who his main goal is to uh, release all of the imprisoned people who are in jail for weed while people are making a bunch of money off of selling it out here in the free world, yeah. which is just insane that that's still a problem. Right. And didn't you say you were on Facebook Marketplace and somebody was like, who wants my bag of mushrooms? It was just a bag of mushrooms on Facebook Marketplace. And I'm like, is that what they do here in L.A.? We're just having bags of mushrooms? Was it a I, cop? Was it titled bag of mushrooms? It was probably a cop. And I'm going to try to buy <laughs> yeah, that no, weed. Don't, don't. Per- <laughs> okay. I will say it's very easy easy to obtain mushrooms here. You don't need to go to Facebook Marketplace. Says you. I'm trying to go to Facebook. It was a big bag. Oh, okay. Good deal. Good deal. I think it's a cop. I don't know. I'd be sus. We're finding out today. I'm going to go right after this. Okay, good, good, good. We got a meeting. (laughs) Nice hanging out with you before you were arrested. (laughs) I know. Sorry. Uh, Bye, guys. (laughs) Uncle Sherry says, I keep getting mushrooms on my Facebook Marketplace, too. It's weird. You guys, don't fall for it. I think it's the police. I wouldn't. We're going to find out. I got to know. It's for science. I got to know. I got to know if it's, <laughs> if it's real. Is it legit? Is it just a man? Is it mushrooms from their backyard? Are they dried? I didn't really, I couldn't tell. Right. Do they, is it just, they're like, yeah, it's mushrooms. I didn't say it wasn't, I didn't say it was hallucinogenic mushrooms. Yeah. I said, uh, here's a bag of mushrooms. They're shiitake people. Yeah. Has anybody yeah. ever been like a cop undercover and then also sold to an undercover cop and then it was like the Spider-Man meme? with oh, like, like you, you me? and you and me and you. Me? Yeah, Probably. Right? Probably. I'm I sure guess. It's happened. I would right imagine. In. Uh, Final Angie 13. Love the new Fraudster season so far. Oh gosh, thanks, Final Angie. And you Appreciate guys, you. are you guys starting from this, the 70s, the 80s? Like what era are you guys? We're just mixing and matching. We're going back. We're going to like the beginning of how it all happened. There's a guy named Harry Anslinger who came in and, and was like, I'm going to be racist in a insidious way and make it so that all the black people can go to jail and make it so that it's because of drugs. 
So that's really wow. that's cool. Yeah, we're starting way back when. Well, like 1920s, like cocaine yeah. with a Coca-Cola we're, in it. Yeah, yeah. We're going to meh, meh, see? Yeah. yeah. We're going way back. <laughs> way, way back. I know things historically accurately. Yeah, uh, I don't know the year, but I know that they, they were doing meh. Were they doing like this? Yeah, they're in that a lot of that a lot of a lot of huh, huh, huh. Okay. a lot of Eartha Kit sounds. Oh yeah, I can't well, do them right good. now, but you just think about it. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, that's that's very uh, important. It's a really important topic. We talk about it to an extent on the show uh, in in different ways, but um, yeah, just to, I feel like a lot of stuff's gone wrong in this country. Should we talk about that? Yeah, oh, really? we're here. I like this this we're experiment. Here. Are you is... running for president? <laughs> I am, just in you time should. for the election, just so everybody knows. I can you imagine I would rather I would rather I would jump off of a building before I could imagine. <laughs> right. Everyone's going to dig up your past. They're going to scrutinize your looks. They're going to scrutinize like everything about you, everything you say. I would have a nervous breakdown. Yeah, I'm having Personally. one right now. Yeah, just even thinking <laughs> yeah. about yeah, it. Yeah, just even thinking about it. Yeah, just being no. here and having one person be like, I like Frosters. I'm like, what did I say on Frosters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't, no. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun it's when all of your thoughts are recorded and then people can go through and like slow motion analyze every word that you've ever said. And right. You just like frame it how they want to and then tell you like, no. Right. Yeah, getting into podcasting was probably a terrible idea for me. It's, it's pro- podcasting was probably a bad idea in general. We should maybe just all stop. But yeah. no, I'm going to keep yapping, but it's not going to be good. Nah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're happy to have you here. Thanks. So exciting. Thanks. Happy to be Fosters, here. Monsters, guys. Monsters. Oh, we talked about, so, oh, speaking of politics, have we seen the new J.D. Vance picture where he's a hunk and a half? Oh, and a I new have, J.D. Vance pick has dropped. Mm, let's suck his cock, Mr. <laughs> wait Worldwide. A oh, wow. wait, 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 wait. This was posted Chiseled. by a politician. Like, this is... Is this... Okay, my mind just shut down. Is this <laughs> meant to be... Mocking him? No, this is no. a Republican uh, Georgia guy who he was like, "Good morning." Like he posted an AI picture. AI? No, wait a minute. It's real. It's he really shedded it down, mewed. Wait, so <laughs> he's a mewer. Pull it back up. I, yeah, can you put that back up? That guy fucks. Yeah, this guy fucks. This guy's got a seven-inch cock. He taps. This guy. Wow, he's chiseled. He's chiseled. He looks like he'd be in a Marvel movie. Yeah. That's not. Can we have a side by side of our of the real one? No, that's the real one. That's the real one. No, you're right. That's not the. That's the real one. That's the real yeah. one. Yeah. To me now, yes. But I think like I bring in this up because I think there's a reason why. Hey, you know, look how you want. I'm not to judge. I don't want to body shame or face shame, but I think a lot of people, especially on the more right side, it's weird that they don't like gender affirming care, yet they can do it. And it's also weird. Well, they that don't think of it as gender affirming care when they do it. That's not yeah. that's not no. the same. Because they're doing it, because I'm doing it. Yes, right. exactly. Um, and also, uh, I think a lot of them sort of have a certain look because it's it's been all been yesified. If you're just constantly looking at like memes of Donald Trump with a bald eagle on his shoulder, you know, that's him. Yeah. That's what he looks like. Wait, is that also a doctored photo or no, is that no, an that's him, photo? baby. That's him. And he's taught to someone, right? He's an undoctored king. Somebody. That's closer, yeah. Well, okay, so the beard is the thing that shaped his face more, right? Yeah. Um, oh, buddy. Well, yeah. You know, I don't care that like his brows could serve. Like I I think he could work inside of what he's got but it's when you're why are you then okay wait okay i have to ask this about this 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 x this tweet tweet whatever you call it who is the man who actually tweeted it does anybody know that's a mike a collins what, what his name was i'm not familiar with mike collins uh, con- me neither representative mike collins from the uh, georgia republican He's, he, he's but Georgia. But if he's old, he probably doesn't can't tell the difference. Like they just don't know. Yeah. They're looking at all these yassified pictures of people. So and if he's never met him in real life, he's like, that's probably what it looks like. Yeah, and that's what they're all doing to their faces. Why is he posting a picture of JD Vance? Because he wants to suck. Because, because he's they go, hot. They go to Bohemian hot JD Grove Vance. and they touch dick tips. It that's does why. feel a little bit like that was meant to be a text to somebody to be like, like good morning, like look how fine he is. And yeah. Isn't that, that what it? That, that was the energy <laughs> I got and. What was the point of him doing that? To turn us on. And I'm okay. officially right. turned okay. on. Good morning. Good morning. We have some other pictures. Good I morning. think I did. I send another one of, um, oh, look, yeah, this is, they all yassify themselves. Yeah. Well, this is him with work done. Yeah. Yeah. He's got his brow lift. He has gotten a ton. Okay. We're not anti Botox over here, but he's gotten a lot 
of forehead Botox, okay. like too much, too. And maybe even hit up Turkey for a little hairline action. That is, yes. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I might have done that. And again, hey, do what you want. It's just it's Matt Gates, right? It's Matt Gates. I think because everybody's just looking at doctored photos of everything, that that's what they want to do to their own faces. Which, if you want to do that, that's fine. I'm just saying, like, hey, look at this. Also, look at this. I'm saying it's not. Look fun. at this. Oh, not that guy. Uh, oh God. Oh, oh brother. Oh, this brother. guy stinks. Well, there he is. Um, I mean, if you're that filthy rich, you better get your fucking work done. Sure. You better fix your hairline, and you better chisel the jaw out. Shh, I mean, absolutely. No judgment. But I think you're correct. No, I'm, again, I'm judging. No, I know they yeah, keep saying right. no judgment. I'm judging. That's, <laughs> I'm here to judge. Let's always judge Elon for literally yeah. everything that yeah. he does. I no, think if you're scrolling him. on social media all day and everything has been doctored and photoshopped, then you should, like, because I've done this, where I'll look at Instagram reels and I'll be like, oh my god, I'm not a size two. My skin has spatches on it like I'm the worst and then I forget that like filters are a thing plastic yeah. surgeries are a thing and this is kind of a, a big problem I see in that party because you just yassify yourself they have all yeah. yassify really themselves also They've you have like mean. flawless skin when do you yeah you're about? gorgeous what <laughs> you're gorgeous but whatever you feel bad just like use whatever AI filter he used that's I know right. exactly. Just and then you'll be like, I'm I'm just, just be as hot behind as JD a screen. Vans. Don't see people in real life ever, and yeah. then you can look however you want. Exactly. Um, That's what I but do. I, I think that you're correct though in pointing out the hypocrisy of that because what they're doing is gender affirming care when they're trying to make themselves look more masculine or more. Um, all American bullshit patriotic nonsense. Oh, yeah. Like who is that guy that uh, his wife left him? Steven something, and he got so many Stevens. That's why the goal. He's got his he got like shoulder like bigger shoulders and chest as a surgery instead of just naturally working out. I like that. That, w that was a new story. I like that. About a year if ago. you have the money to do that, sure. Fuck it. Be. A cartoon, but, but also, also don't super then try to gender from in care. Yeah, that's the thing. Don't be negative and don't like don't try to block other people from being them their authentic selves. Word, right? I'm like yeah. it doesn't seem like that. That's whatever. I know that they do it because they're they got all kinds of worms in their brain. But right, Crowder, that's his name. Oh, Stephen Crowder. Right, right, right. Louder with Crowder. I don't know who that is. This guy, yeah. See, he got like. Don't know the. I don't know any of these fake people. Fake shoulders. And I love and that for me. I love that for you so much. Yeah, I'm living in a, a world of mudang right now, and I don't. I don't ever want to stop. Especially because this guy called himself a comedian, and he is. What does he do? What is his he thing? He just goes and he trolls college stuff. campuses. He like puts on a yeah. dress and says, "I'm a woman," like in a very mocking style, and oh, like no. tries to get into women's bathrooms. And I'm like, dude, if you want to be trans, like if you want to be a woman and like get the care you need, like. Do but he do does. I mean, maybe he, whatever the case is, he's he's battling it, some kind of inner demon yeah, in there. Yeah, like that. Um, because he also was caught like screaming at his pregnant wife. Oh yeah. no! It was so. And thing. he made her. He made his pregnant wife give their dog medication that pregnant women can't touch because it'll kill the baby. So you see what? her putting well, on gloves. Well, it's like at risk. Yeah, at risk. And he's just smoking a cigar and like yelling at her. Please, please. This man is a menace. I was better off not knowing him. Yeah, Let's no, talk more see, about Mudang. She doesn't need any sort of <laughs> any sort of work done. She's perfect. She's rotund. She's wet. She's, <laughs> she's moist. She wet loves to vegetables. The touch. Wet to the touch. We love that about her. Yeah, we love we love being uh, dewy. Yeah, she's dewy. She's got natural blush. That is nice. That's right. I would say she's moisturized and unbothered, but yeah. she's actually very bothered. She's only bothered like an hour a day. Yeah. The rest of the time she's asleep, and that's how I'm trying to be. I do right. think that's a great way to be. There she Aww. is. Yeah, oh, that's girl. my girl. Perfect in every way, an angel. I also really like they keep putting videos out of her... Um, playing with people, which is like to like maul at them, but yeah. because she's so small, she can't do any damage, but what she's doing if she was full grown would just like rip a yeah. person in half oh, once and everybody's she, like, oh, She's so getting there. Cute. Once she rips a person in half, we're gonna have to cancel her. But for now, I know. incredible, we sad. love her. Well, that's so why fresh. the handlers are touching her because they have to get her used to people. It, Cause she's born in a zoo. Yeah, but she still can't really be touching hippos in the zoo when they get bigger. Yeah, she's gonna look at, she's gonna fuck somebody up soon. Aww. But for now, adorable, we so love that. Cute. So cute. So cute. That was a good palate cleanser after the yeah, well, nightmare men we had to look at. Unfortunately, there's just more sad things. Oh, all right. Well, um, I tried, you guys. I really did. I know, and I appreciate it. Uh, real quick, I wanted to say here, um, 
you guys probably are aware. Maybe you don't really know because there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. But there's been some really. De- oh, lost my my earpiece. There we go. Um, there have been some really devastating hurricanes in the South uh, in the last couple weeks, and a lot of people are in a really bad spot. There's some more hurricanes coming, unfortunately, to Florida in the next couple days. Hurricane Milton, I believe, is the next one. And uh, so some something we've talked about on the show a bunch is human trafficking and the problems um, the things to look out for with human trafficking and, and the, the ways that it happens. And uh, we've talked about how natural disasters uh, t- tend to be, I think we were talked about a lot during, uh, we talked about C- Katrina. I think that was when we were bringing it up a lot. Um, but I just wanted to like quickly bring that up that during this time period, there's a lot of people who are at extreme high risk for things like human trafficking. And it's not, necessarily always the way that is just like somebody is on the street and gets picked up things happen where people need somewhere to stay and as we talked about with Katrina people were literally going to Craigslist and and seeing somebody offering a room to stay into and um, it can look like them getting assaulted it can look like them being kind of tricked into sex work it can look like disappearing right Um, in different ways and so I just wanted to highlight Uh, For anybody who might be at risk or you think somebody you know might be at risk, if you want to cut over to my screen, this is um, the National Human Trafficking Hotline. Uh, You can go to this website, but they are obviously right now experiencing really high volumes um, of people in in high risk situations. So if you go to this site and scroll down, you can go to a referral directory and these Places that you can go to, like if I put in Los Angeles, they might not all be the ideal spots for you. For example, I try not to go to places that are, um, you know, super religiously run. But in a situation like this, they have been at least vetted for safety in the moment. Like you can go there and not immediately be at, at risk. So they, they can, might have a place to stay f- for you. You might have be able to um, access food and things like that so that you don't end up in the hands of somebody who wants to do something bad. Um, so it's not a perfect circumstance, but they I do think you it's good that they have this search engine to just see what's local to you and to be able to access that. And so, you know, people in North Carolina, Tennessee, um, Florida, Georgia are all really struggling right now. And so there's a a myriad of ways you can donate and just, you know, keep people in your like thoughts or your vibes or whatever you want to call it. Um, I know we have family or in that area too. And a lot of us are watching that happen. It's really, really bad guys. Yeah. It's horrendous. Yeah. And I didn't even think about that as an like a thing that happens, but of course, you know, sometimes it brings out the worst in people. It does, because it brings out the best in people too, in a lot of circumstances, we know that people come together and really help, but unfortunately, yes, the other side of that, people who are like deeply broken, uh, will see a disaster and then want to just take advantage of it in every way they can. And um, it's a bummer, I don't like it, but that's why you're here today. Yeah. To just be uh, bummed out. Yeah. It's but, happening. But lots of, <laughs> <laughs> lots, of, lots of good, positive people are there to help, too. So that's why yes. when, when you go to services like this, there are a lot of really good people who are genuinely just trying to make sure everybody's OK. And you don't need to, like, seek out people on social media and stuff like that because... It, there's a lot of things that can go terribly wrong really quickly. And don't ever believe something that seems too good to be true honestly, in that situation. Like you don't, if somebody's like, actually I have this extra $100,000 I can give you, um, let's go meet at this parking lot. They're probably not going to give you money, you know? It's probably gonna be worse. No, but what about the $100,000? They said it though, Natalie. Amber, no, Amber. They said it, they said Amber. Don't Amber. Lie. No, Come Amber. On. Back check that TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta go check that out. Um, I'm proud of you for doing that though, and you, you did, you went and looked. You know, it's kind of a bummer because the case was pretty fun too. <laughs> I wish it was real. But Sorry. You know what? 
Oh, well. Can't win them all. Can't win them Well, you know what's all. real? That earthquake thing that's happening tomorrow. That one's real. That one's real. That one's real. You know, Oh, the Alexa one? Yeah, right. the Alexa earthquake. A fun thing about conspiracy theories, because I love going down a rabbit hole. Me it's too. fun. Love, yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah, who doesn't love it? Oftentimes it can be kind of explained logically, which isn't as fun. Boo. Boo. Like when there was a solar eclipse... Um, there were high people in the government going on TV saying, hey, if you live in these towns, back up water, back up food. And everybody took these clips and they made these, like, you know, put some dark music over it and they said, the Lord is coming or whatever. But if you look oh, at yeah. it closer, it's because these small towns where you could see the eclipse the most just aren't equipped with extra food and water in hotels. They're really tiny, tiny towns. Mm. So this is just somebody telling people, like, just go get a backup for a few days. That's the conspiracy. It wasn't that right. the devil oh. is rising up again from the ocean, I wish, with his horns. Ooh, that could still be. Could I be, mean, why can't it be both? Of, I know. Can it be both? Can it be both? I agree. Um, yeah, totally. And there's a lot of times with conspiracy theories, there's a kernel of truth to them, right? That the reason that people latch onto them, because there's one part of it that is accurate, right? which is that supplies might be short in a town, but the reason is not as intense as you might think in that moment. And that kind of stuff leads to consequences. I mean, that's going to be something we're covering quite a bit in our season four uh, coming up, how a little tiny conspiracy can really spiral out really fast. And one of the, I, I don't know, I don't have the person's, I don't even want to say their name anyway, but there was a woman, a mother who during the solar eclipse ended up annihilating her family um, because she thought reader. it was the, the uh, end. Damn. Oh, action. Bass, D-A-R-D-D. -D. Thank you for gifting all these tier one subs. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. That's so nice yeah. of you. Thank you. Um, yeah, Kiannon, that's who does it. They love the conspiracies. Also, maybe sometimes people are bored. Maybe sometimes they're just bored and they want to believe that the devil's okay, coming but back. also, has anyone checked on that little town? <gasps> Oh, uh, hmm. somebody says uh, no one's checked on the town. Shit. Shit. I lived I in a zone of totality, and it was crazy 24 hours. That's what Aloriel says. So what? I guess, like, they just had a lot of visitors to go see. I don't know, but. Or was it Aurel's the purge? Right? We didn't. Did we don't the, know. Yeah, we haven't checked the town again. It's no. all the town. It doesn't exist. It is. Maybe. Conspiracy theories are fun. I get it. And also, I, I think that there's a level of um, conspiracies a lot of times hit. Any of us are have the risk of believing things that aren't true. Different reasons, different things, but I think any one of us could believe a bunch of stuff that doesn't actually exist or doesn't make sense or no. like is not correct. But a I lot of times, especially when we got into like QAnon stuff, a lot of those people are struggling in a lot of ways. They are mad about things and it's a lot easier to think that it's like a cabal Instead of like a politician who's just taking your money, right. when mm -hmm. he is saying, "No, no, no, it's the these uh, babies are being and and people are coming in through the border, and they're the ones, not us, who are f literally ex like taking all of your money from you. It's the other poor people. They're the ones who are the problem here." Mm -hmm. And then they go, "Yeah, you're right. I hate them. Yuck." Yeah. And then they continue to be able to just make money from that, you know. Yeah. It's easier my, to hit a group. Oh yeah. yeah. My yeah. mother lives in like Backwoods, Mississippi, and she's like, "So tell me about all those drag queens reading to those kids." And I'm like, "You live in like they're never you're never going to see that. You have to worry about your local politician taking your money because your roads suck and there's like nothing <laughs> going on. Like no one's coming for your kids here." Yeah, right. All the drag queens are desperately trying to get into that town. They, they're like, get yeah. me in Mississippi. <laughs> they're knocking on every door. Right. It's like when I move, I'm moving here to L.A. and people are like, oh, my gosh, it's so dangerous. They're like, how are you ever going to survive? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like walking down the street. Seems all right to me. Yeah. Maybe I, I missed out. On it's a gunplay. city. Yeah, yeah, it's a city, it's but city. like, but also I go to New York and then people are like, oh my gosh, how are you in New York? People getting punched in the face every day. And I'm like, I don't know. I've found a way not to get punched in the Somehow face. Somehow you didn't Somehow get punched Somehow I face. manage. One time I, uh, a guy swung at me in okay. New York, but he That's missed. That's pretty standard. I could see you lighting yeah. him on fire, Natalie. Like you should walk around with a can of kerosene. <laughs> just, <laughs> just light clean. people on fire. I'm gonna start doing that. Yeah, like forget the guns and knives and tasers. Like you know how they give out like the oh here's a little bear here's a little spray for you. Like that's just gonna piss off a perpetrator. But you have I'm, to have locked. You have I to wanna have, locked. have like yeah, because the the spray, the little bear spray has a little red nozzle. Yeah. I wanna have 
a hairspray and a lighter and just right. light it up. It's kerosene time, ladies. It's kerosene time. And then you also have something to do your hair. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got both. Excuse I me. I think that's important. That's you know, important. let's bring back firearms. Am I right, guys? <laughs> yeah, we don't have enough guns here. I like calling like open fire firearms. No, we're calling it, it is, firearms now. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's your arms are producing fire. Yeah. What if That's we right. start selling that? Drone we butts. We start doing it because it's separate. Separately, we're going to have brand. lighter. Yeah, LPM brand lighters and hairspray, and we won't say that it what it's for, but it's for that. It's for oh, lighting yeah. people and then up. You wank. Yeah. And then you wink. Yeah. Drone butt says, my dad swore that I wouldn't use his corpse to vote Democratic if he died. I would love to see a weekend at Bernie's where you bring your dad's corpse too. to the polls and you're like, bum, 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 and then vote. <laughs> and no one can tell. And no one can tell. He put sunglasses on. He put sunglasses on. It's fine. Yeah. Um, I love that. That's, that's a great. Fun. That's a great plot for a movie that I'm going to write tonight. Yeah. After this Weekend episode. at Bernie's 3. Um, yeah, so... Back in the habit. <laughs> Back in the habit. That was for me. It's fine. <laughs> that was one for you. <laughs> um... Okay, now we have to go back to another sad thing. Okay, so now we have to go back to another sad thing. I do guys. my best, and I try to talk about lighting people on fire. And I, I love, I it. love it. Yeah, here we go. Here we, we go. Here we go. We have talked a lot about Madeline Soto, and I'm just doing a little basic update. Not really an update, but things that I, I wanted to just mention about the case. This case obviously really sticks in my my head, and I I think a lot of people who follow the show also follow this case quite heavily. Um, uh, Madeline Soto, who unfortunately was essayed and then killed by her mother's ex boyfriend, um, which is a whole sentence in itself. Yeah, uh, who had, he had groomed her for years and done all kinds of stuff. She was it was right after her thirteenth birthday. They're from Florida, and uh, currently the perpetrator, Stefan Stearns, is in jail. But one of the really unique parts about this specific case is that they have been, well, there's been a bunch of content creators who have uh, pulled the, it's called the Freedom of Information Act, FOIA. Um, the police have released a lot of the interview videos, like the interrogation videos and a lot of the phone calls from prison, things like that. And it's almost to an extent where it's they it almost feels like to because people hate stuff and stern so much, including the police, they want them to everybody to see all of it because it's uh, really one thing for one. It's super humiliating, like they do a full nude like photo shoot of Stefan Stearns and they released it Whoa. to the public. You can do that? Well, I think if you are somebody that people hate as much as him, that you they just decide they will. So you can see his penis? Well, I mean, on the content that's been released by, if you get the FOIA Act uh, footage, you will see his penis. Yeah. What do you think? Is it like a Mudang penis? It's <laughs> just roly poly and it's just moist. Wet. It's just wet and blushing. I mean, I get if you <laughs> blushing, I hate you. <laughs> if you see the footage of the the rest of him, I can't imagine it's great to look at. Um, the, Who's the rest looking of this body? up? You little sick fucks! Give me this camera. You sick fucks looking this up? Why are you looking up this man's peen? Which which camera's yours? I don't know. I think that one's yours. You. <laughs> Why are you looking up this man's penis? What are you going to gain from that? Well, <laughs> look up more Mudang. <laughs> you sick fuck. Oh, I thought you were going to look Aww. at his penis. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. so scared. I was Dead. scared. Oh, God. Okay. There we go. But, yeah, why are we... What? what? Full nude? We censor don't laugh it. At it. No, I mean, it's censored yeah, on the... In, like, when it's going up on YouTube and stuff, it's censored, but not if you get it directly from the police. And honestly, fuck him so hard. I don't care. I'm glad he's being humiliated. But it is literally him in a room with a bunch of different police officers pulling his pants down, making him lift his nuts up to take photos of his penis and stuff because, unfortunately, he had 30,000 files of CSAM on his his hard drive of this little girl. Um, what? 30,000 pictures. Did he like deleted his phone the day before he got caught? He's like, oh, I just did a factory resetting on my phone. You know how you do. And you're like, what? Yeah. But this never goes away. No. 
you can't just make that entire crime disappear into the night. So oh, hell they no. recovered all of it and they found this girl had been abused for years and years. It, oh. it was a nightmare. Um, but now you get to look at his taint. Yeah, you can see it if you'd like right. to. I do like him being humiliated because he gave I he like didn't give that little girl a chance to have any sort of life. But <sighs> the the issue on top of that, of course, he's the number one villain in that situation. He is never getting out of jail, even though they haven't had trial yet. There is absolutely no way he's getting out. Yeah, it's like unrefutable unref- proof. Oh, That's, yeah. Ugh. Even without, because he's also going to be charged with her murder, and he definitely uh, did it. Uh-huh. Um, even if it was just the content, it is so prolific over so many years in the stuff that was happening. He would have already gotten a sentence for the rest of his life. So he's he's done for. He's cooked. And Thank God, because he is a light a on humanity. Yeah. Um, but the uh-huh. other aspect of that is trying to look at this without mom shaming, without parent shaming, but also looking at it realistically, that these situations, that the, the reason that these things happen sometimes is because parents go into complete denial. Or mm-hmm. sometimes they're not even active participants in yeah. it, but they decide to... Ex- just believe even though they know they know in the back of their head Jennifer Soto that woman knew she knew that something was really really wrong and she went you know what it'll just work itself out yeah she sent just her gonna... daughter to go sleep with him in bed Re- what? yeah Which again, I don't want to mom shame because that's a no I'll, I will shame job, I will mom right? shame that don't yeah. ever please don't ever do that's that a mom were shame. they married they weren't even in no. a relationship anymore they weren't in a relationship so she's just letting her daughter sleep with a random man, essentially. So she could get sleep. Yeah. Because they oh. all slept in the same bed together. I don't, I forgot to oh. mention that. Meanwhile, they had a guest room. Yeah. She couldn't sleep in for some reason. Yeah, it is. And she was 13, the girl? Yeah. She had t- turned 13 the, the the day before that she was killed. It was her 13th birthday. Oh, my God. Yeah. So there's a, obviously a, a myriad of issues here. Most people are not, first off, having their child sleep in bed with them in a, the at all. Yeah. Um, being a 12 year old uh, sleeping but she didn't have a room her mom mm-hmm. took the only bedroom that was open and made her sleep in the living room so she slept with her mom most of the time but also slept with this other man who just came and went from their lives um, and I don't think that that is a thing most people do generally so this is a very extreme situation version of this but it is just like this case is is consuming people in so many ways my, myself included because it's it's the it's the negligence of it it's the like the acceptance of just letting your daughter um, experience all this stuff for a lot of people think it's because she just wanted a man to be around mm. um, a lot of people also think that it's because he helped like take care of the daughter because she had a huge she she takes a, she's basically a junkie she mm-hmm. takes prescription pills but she she sleeps like all day and she doesn't really she wasn't parenting her kid and mm-hmm. so this other person was like helping mm-hmm. um but i think a lot of people resonate with this idea of being ignored and having your trauma be ignored by adults even if they're not doing it it's like having somebody there just like knowing something's wrong but just like not helping you as a little kid and that that this little girl is going through all of this and i think the other side of it too is that um we hear all these like nightmare stories about children who get uh caught in these csam uh cycles where they're in repeatedly in content that these creeps are are trading and uh, i and like a lot of us kind of go like how how did this happen to this kid? Like in our in our minds, a lot of us I think go to a place of they were kidnapped and they're held in a basement and like nobody sees them and they they're just in this horrible, uh, you know, dungeon somewhere, which does happen. But you look at kids like Madeline and she went to school, she had friends, she went to Disney World all the time, she was in the world. And this was still happening to her for at least five years solid, yeah. constant. And that's what this looks like a lot of the time. And so I think it's important to remember that we have to look out for stuff like that, like the red flags of kids can be in the situation and it's not always gonna look like they're you know, chained up somewhere. 
Like they, they, she had, she had, was, you know, attending school regularly, yeah, even if she, she wasn't in her doing. Household. Yes. Yeah. She, she completely got all of this normalized. Normalized sleeping with adults in bed. Like normalized mom leave lets them be alone all the time. And I don't think people should necessarily be afraid of their kids being. And that's the other. Like, how do you balance that? Because. Also being terrified of every single person that your kid's around doesn't seem like the right solution, but you do have to watch out for those red flags because the kids who end up in these situations in content, because unfortunately, mm -hmm. what we're going to most likely find out in court is that he was selling this to other pedophiles. So not only was he using it for himself and his own needs, he was also making a bunch of money because he didn't have a job and he was buying a lot of stuff all the time. And I think he was also giving it to the kid's mom. And so another reason why she didn't know it happened, but she was just like- Turning the other cheek mm -hmm. because she's like, well, I'm getting paid. Yep. Yuck. He's bringing money in. So maybe he just, maybe has like savings or something, like just rationalizing it in that way. But you know, looking out for red flags of kids who are suffering in that who become depressed who who are having panic attacks her mom was putting a bunch of medication into her which i doubt she really needed but like mm. that there were so many adults who failed that little girl and we just have to really be um like cog cognizant and aware of kids if they're if you're seeing these mood changes if you're it, it, there were so many ways she cried out for help and it's just heartbreaking and we see these cases over and over again including there was one that um has just recently basically been not solved but the guy the guy who did it was charged with murder this little girl named Isaiah Harris um if you want to pop over to my screen I don't know where the picture of her went hang on there she is she was groomed by a family friend uh and she thought she was in a relationship with him. Oh no. And so, she, you know, and same, a lot of people think that about Madeline too, that she thought maybe that her and Stefan were like in a relationship. Um, I'm trying to find the fucking creepazoid who did this to her, but it, he was a family friend and he had gotten her pregnant and he tried to cover it up uh, like the coward that he is for sure. And How old was she again? She, this little girl was 13, I believe. And the guy was 41. Yeah, his name's Jarvis Butts, which is like the most fitting person to ever have a Butts last name. Um, and yeah. he's in jail, right? He's he's cooked. He's gone. Like he's done for. He's, he's gone. yeah, he's in jail. But it's too late because he did this, yeah. and I'm not blaming her family by any stretch. I know a lot of guys and women women do this too are really good at grooming families too but sometimes there are fa there there uh oh lost my screen sometimes there are uh, really really clear red flags that people just like it's so hard to deal with this concept that somebody you know is doing something this fucked up right and even like your own family members it's hard to sometimes be like oh my cousin's a bad person because mm -hmm. Just because they're blood doesn't mean they're good. Somebody says in the chat, as a mandatory reporter, teacher, it sickens me when I hear this thing. There was a girl at school I was an aide, I was an aide at two years ago. She was smart and pretty with her older boyfriend. She went missing and has never been found. Oh, 16 no. years old. Oh my god. I'm so sorry to hear that. That's terrible. Fucking terrible. And that, yeah, it's. It, and we have these mandatory reporters in. Again, it's so easy to point fingers from the outside about who failed who or whatever, but even when people do report, it's still sometimes like really hairy because when you get CPS involved, when you get these different organizations, there's a lot of issues inside of those which we talk about. But ultimately, it's like I think the best thing we can do is like people, uh, you know, villages around kids and people who want to make sure the next generation is like looked for and cared for is just to pay attention to science and not necessarily think everybody is you know it's so it's so scary because then you're just like who does who, who the fuck are any of you huh? right it's, yeah. it's got to be like a weird game as a parent because you want to protect them but it's also like you want them to see the world so when they're like 21 out in the world they're, they're not like, just like i don't I'm know scared. how to navigate know. anything yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, and it, it's like the other side of the coin of pe like the very c 
conservative, like, um, evangelical families who are like, we can't let them know anything about the outside world, and then they can't, they're not equipped for life. And sometimes in the house, there's already shit going on. Right. Um, but, oh, oh my computer know? crashed. It's fine. Don't worry. I didn't need to. I didn't. It's cool. Yes, we didn't need to have anything to reference. It's fine. Well, we were talking about, like, family members and people just being in denial in general. Um, where, around where I live currently, I live in New Jersey, um, there was a kindergartner. It was a young girl. She was acting weird. The signs were there. And the parents asked her, like, what's been going on? And she said someone had been touching her. So they blamed a student. So it was a year-long case, like, trying to prove that the student did it. Kindergartners, though. So people thought that was fishy, but whatever. They're blaming the student. It ends up being the uncle. And it just came out that it was the uncle. But it's like the big denial of, like, we don't want to believe it's family. It's got to be someone else. i got to point my finger at somebody else because it can't possibly be something that's in my house that I allowed in my home. Yeah. It's yeah, that's that's so it's so hard. And I get I get why that feels impossible, but you have to like be you have to like man, you have to not be you can't let it happen just cuz yeah. you feel ashamed. Yeah. Like I just feel like it's the idea of wanting to hide family issues for pride or or whatever. To show face. Yeah. It's just like cuz it would tarnish the family name. It, even if yeah. that's your like end goal, don't you know eventually it's gonna happen? It's gonna come out, and you're going to look like a even piece worse. of shit. Like yeah. your you family name. It. Yes. Like I don't know. I guess some people just don't want. They want to live in denial in that way. I guess, but it, when it damages like the most vulnerable of our of our society of our species, whatever the fuck you want to call it. How do you live with your? I don't know. I'm How do you live? With I'm like, I just feel yourself? like I'm being very broad right now. It's but true. I just I don't right. know. Uh, you so want to protect some random man instead of the kid that's crying right. out to you? Right. I don't know. Or a, or a lady. I mean, it's mostly. Oh yeah. But there's some but it, there's older some, female. Yeah. Perpetrators. Right. Um, somebody says I'm a mandated reporter, and oftentimes I make a report, but it's not accepted and investigated because by the DCFS, because in part I work in such a wealthy area. Ooh. And somebody says they work in a very low income area, and says so it's the same thing. The mentality is snitches get stitches. So I yeah. guess it's just everywhere. Yeah, wow. different issues, different places. Um, but certainly, people with money get away with a lot more. That's for absolute certain. Damn. Sometimes, like. That's what uh, some of the major issues with CPS involve, like social workers are, are they have really, really, really hard jobs and people who work in that field get a lot of shit. And I understand there's not always some of them are not necessarily great people, but there is a lot of really caring, good people in there that have very few resources. And we've talked about it on the show before. It seems like there just needs to be kind of like a um, an overhaul of the whole system because it doesn't necessarily always work. But right. like. People who are in poverty, who, um, and this is also coming from like people who foster and, and follow these things have, have said this, that a lot of people who end up in foster care in the CPS system are through what's called neglect, which a lot of times is just like not having enough money. Mm -hmm. And so if you, you could just be like, instead of getting like assistance that would help you help your family they just like take the kids away yeah. which is not great for anybody but then on the other hand if you are doing something really bad to your kids but you have money like look at the the frankies which is like a mormon family i don't know do you follow mommy vlogging at all no because i you know you just oh started my, watching mormon wives I, I finished the mormon wives baby and so i've seen them be just like a mess on that show but i don't know what they're what are they doing that's diabolical oh you if you're starting to get down the road of mormon I'm lore scared. let me tell you there's there's a family vlogger family who um they're called they were called eight passengers they are no longer a channel because the mother is currently in prison um for child abuse but basically she, this woman named Ruby, she started going down this really weird path that was like part Mormonism, part, I don't know, this other, she was working with this crazy woman named Jody Hildebrand, and they were coming together to like um, discipline her children. And like on camera? Some of it, but not all of it. So people a long time before the arrests happened 
were picking up on these really weird things that were happening in the house because, of course, family vloggers give their children zero privacy. Right. So they're seeing all of these really bizarre, invasive, like boundary breaking things and like these punishments that didn't seem very safe. Like the son sleeping on a beanbag chair in the living room. Even though they were extremely wealthy from family vlogging, they were millionaires. The, the son was, like, not allowed to have a bed for, like, being mean to his other kid. It, it, that's, like, the least of it, too. Like, there's yeah. really messed up stuff. Um, but because of that, she was publicly announcing child abuse, right? Like, on her channel. CPS was called and police were called a bunch of times to her house. But because they are this, like, perfect little, like, rich white Mormon family, every time they would come, they would just be like... <laughs> I, it's so silly. We're just on the internet. You're like, don't even. And eventually, they stopped checking. And this whole time, the kids were being starved, bound up, like all of this shit. And the way that the the case finally was cracked is that one of the sons escaped. Oh my god! Starved, emaciated, <gasps> to a neighbor, and that was the way that they got help. And so. CPS and all of these like government people had gone to their house, but because they looked a certain way, yeah, they were like, mm, it's, it's fine, fine. Yeah. it's fine. And her house went on their sale. Their house is nice, yeah. They, yeah. There's like a basement of horrors in the house because the house went on sale, so you can check it on Zillow. Jody Hildebrandt's, yeah, yeah. yeah Jody Hildebrandt's house where the kids were eventually being held. How many um, kids? There was eight or six. There were six, but um, two of them, as in many families with a lot of kids. One or two end up being the sort of scapegoat kids. Yeah, like the, they, well, they get the, they're the bad one. They're the one who's always causing trouble, but they're not. Oh, final Um, Angie 13. Is this the woman who was laughing about her kids not being sad enough as punishment? Yes. So she punished her children. I think they were like four and five at the time. It actually, you'd have to actually go further into detail because that could actually be a couple different family bloggers. But she, they, they weren't sad enough about the punishment. So she made them like, like, like do physical hard labor outside in Utah heat in the summer. Yeah, I mean they were. T- she was torturing. She one of the torture. kids she was throwing into a cactus over and over what? again. Yeah, um, and this was being Just for like TikTok entertainment. No, this was off camera. The, oh, okay, the really okay. violent stuff they were doing off camera. But then when the kids are on camera, they're like, "I love you, mommy," because they're scared, they're scared for their lives. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah, and if you go and look at her older videos, she just she's like this, well, we're all going to get dressed today, and I guess little gay baby girl didn't get dressed fast enough, so you're going to have to mop the floors. It's like a Disney villain. It is. It's a Disney villain. And which is why people were reporting her, and she, it was all ignored. Like the um, the woman, Jody Hildebrandt's house, so the mom's friend who was helping her punish her kids, they they found eventually after the, the little boy saved all of his siblings. Yeah. Um, she had a, uh, a room that was in her basement that was a safe. So literally only locked from the outside, like a big safe door. And that's where the kids stayed. Oh, my like God. Like no windows. No air, ventilation, nothing. They could have like died so. down there. I mean, they were yeah. on the verge. That The reason that kid finally found the courage is because he, I think he thought he was going to die or his sister was going to die. My question, I guess, is if she's continuing to do these, well, it was at the time, doing these TikTok videos, did she not include the emaciated kid in the videos? Is no, that- after a while. So when the punishment started to get really bad, she said, um, she said, I'm going to stop filming my children and like wanted to be like applauded for it. But what she did instead, she took her family channel. You guys who already know all this story. I know you like hearing it still. So she took her family channel and this therapist woman, Jody, and her created a new thing with the people who were already on her channel, she flipped it. Mm. And it was a therapy uh, channel called Connections. And so what was a family channel became these two lunatics talking about um, how to make your family the right way and all this stuff. And it was all about like living in truth was what they called it, living in truth. And all of it was um, in, like actually insan- insanity. It was yeah. just like. Just like two unhinged Delulu. Unhinged. unhinged. And they're in the basement and it's like all white and beautiful and like flowers, but it's like this made up set. And literally behind them is one of the rooms with the kids just starving behind. Yeah, them. while they were doing the therapy videos, the, the, the like safe in the where the kids were being held locked behind doors was right behind them. You just didn't know. So I feel like, like that will use therapy, they'll use religion, yeah. all of it. Yes. It seems like it's out of like like Lords of Salem 
movie or like the eyes, the hills have eyes. Like who's Rob Zombie? That's like a Rob Zombie movie. Yeah. I mean, kind of. Oh. Um, yeah. So you can go ahead and look, go down that I rabbit won't. hole afterwards. I won't. I hope <laughs> those kids are okay. Oh, they're, I mean, not to laugh. They are okay. Um, obviously, they are being extremely private, but the oldest yeah. daughter, whose name is Sherry, she's an adult now. She's spoken out at length. She actually had been tri- trying, again, oldest kid trying to save her siblings by going through CPS and police, and nobody would listen to her. She was like, she had gotten away and she was trying to stop her mom from doing this stuff and they wouldn't stop. They wouldn't help her. Um, So she's been very vocal about it and the kids are okay. They're just obviously in therapy and being treated and treatment and stuff, Um, but they're not being public. It's so crazy because you know that if she, like if the oldest daughter came and took all the kids away, then she'd get arrested for kidnapping. Yep. So like, what what can you do? Where do you see our child brides episodes? <laughs> oh God! What about that one? No, because that's like because she's young enough, she's old enough. Like, she could be there's there's several states in America, California including one of them. Where there's we're doing no, we're doing spun greatest hits today. Yeah. <laughs> greatest hits. There's no minimum age to marry, so you could essentially, if you found the right judge, the right one, you could marry off a two year old to a fifty year old if you want. In California, you in can California you can, and she's too young to run away because it's considered a runaway. She She's too young to be taken because now you're kidnapping her. So she has to stay in this marriage. Yeah. So essentially, when if you end up, this is still happened. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> My brain. <laughs> I'm sorry. But for, in 41 states, child marriage is still legal in this country today. And if the uh. spouse who's the underage one is, which typically is a girl, but there are like 8% of those, I think some, I, I forget what. Uh, this it's t- a pretty like 5 percent yeah. Was, uh, was, is boys, it's minor boys. boys. But um, it's usually girls and, uh, or, I'm sorry, I should say 8% of minor boys to adult women. Yeah. Because yeah. there are some that are both minors, which is also a whole problem. But like a, a lot of them are minor girls to adult men. And if that, that marriage happens, which is usually with parental consent, which is a whole thing, um, they can't divorce, legally can't divorce their spouse until they're 18. So they are then now in the custody of their husband. Um, they are allowed to be married. The uh, like um, SA doesn't count anymore. Like if uh, statutory is no longer an issue. So if you would have gone become a sex offender, for example, if you uh, started having sex with a 15 year old and you're 30. If you marry that child, it's legal. And then that child cannot legally go anywhere until she's 18. Uh, made by Lauren B says, you're hitting all the stories that make me talking to people at parties. And pop- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the guy at the party that's like, what is happening? Right. <laughs> Oh, we got some subs, and we also got a silly video to end it, though. We do. I'm okay, sorry, guys. Thank goodness. And this was uh, this. You got got a, a lot of um, the worst of our content. <laughs> just give me now. more Mudang. Yeah. We'll or be- or J D Vance Yassified. <laughs> hurry, hurry. <laughs> we got we'll a silly video. Gonna- okay, good. Oh, here we go. <laughs> and also this. this Thank God. I never thought I'd be so happy to see his face. Oh yeah, for sure. Let's do it. Is it st- the Sims? Was that a fart? That one slip out and you did in it. Oh my this god, yes, scary. I'm so sorry. Oh, babe, don't even what? worry about it. Hey, what, is it? what am I looking happens. at? Ooh, what it must is, have been that burrito I had last week. Uh, that damn burrito. Is there, is there a sound that I can <laughs> oh, potentially? On. Yeah. Uh, I knew I should have had that broccoli. I like that you just, I want you to guess what they're saying. Okay. <laughs> Oh I boy! Okay, it's, it's your ass. There's the hot man right. in my living room. It's not the room. broccoli. It's not the burrito. I'm not it's hot. My ass. hair looks like it's on fire. Right. Oh, <laughs> well, way too okay. damn man. Shit. I like yours much better. <laughs> I'm scared. It's a lot of farts. I'm oh, it's fart noises. It up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't breathe. Imagine having Hammer. what did I you find? Imagine having all this yeah, you're too damn talent comfortable. to make you beautiful artwork like this, and you waste it on whatever this is. Or this is just, just AI. AI. Did AI do this? Yeah. Baby, Should I blame Alexa? Oh, this is Alexa. Let's blame Alexa for this. This is Alexa. Alexa, you bitch. Yeah. Dang. There goes no. my baby. That's right. We also got some gifted subs tonight. Do you Thank make goodness. Them? Thank you guys so much for, for being here. Thank you for the gifted subs. Gahar43 and Action Bastard gifted five subs. Wow. Thank you so, so much. We, um... 
we have no dogs tonight, so we have to leave a little bit early so that we can they can set up for a v- very differently toned stream. Yeah. Um, maybe they're going to talk about crime. They too. might also talk about what we talked about. Maybe they're going to piggyback off of. Are they going to copy me? Maybe. <laughs> if they watch. I'm so Are sick of watching? no dogs doing that. Well, it's music, so I'm sure they could find some problematic musicians. Oh, right? definitely. I think there's a at few. least one or two. A few, one or two. One yeah. or two of them. Yeah. Um, thank you for being with So Fun. Come wow. back another time. Let's keep talking about Fraudster. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. let's keep. I want to. I don't want to hear more about no. this, but I also do. I feel like I need to know what's happening outside. I've been shielding myself with the mooding of it all, but now I need to know. Ugh. We, we, I, I want to just hide behind Mudang as she gets older. Yeah. Keep getting bigger. Well, More now that we've talked hide. about her, she's going to just show up on your feed, so you'll be all right. What is she? Is she okay. I thought you meant because she's going to commit a crime. Oh, well, yeah, that too. She's going <laughs> to eat you. And she's going to be doing crime. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right, sweet. Okay, follow, follow Fraudsters. Do you have a yes. handle? Yeah. Um, we are at Fraudsters LPN, and then I'm Ariel Yeti. At Ariel Yeti. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank All you, right. everybody. Hey guys. Bye. Bye. No dogs. See you.